Welcome to Leonardtown, a small town in the heart of St. Mary's County, Maryland. This charming, walkable town is known for its beautiful landscapes, breathtaking waterways, and friendly, welcoming people. When you enter Leonardtown, you'll be transported back in time as you take in the quaint town square and historic buildings. But Leonardtown is undergoing a current renaissance of its own here in its downtown area, with the addition of an eclectic mix of specialty shops, galleries, and world-class restaurants. Our journey in discovering Leonardtown starts with a culinary tour of the fine dining experiences it has to offer. From the freshest of seafood to a mix of cultural cuisines, from Asian and Mexican to Italian and much more. Whether you're looking for an elegant, formal meal to down-home family fare, you're sure to find what you're looking for in Leonardtown. Hi, I'm Andrew Ponte. I'm a resident of Leonardtown and I wanna show you the best dining that this small town has to offer. We have everything that you can get in a big city. Juicy burgers, tasty wings, delicious bagels, and of course, there's a the seafood. Whatever you're looking for, it's right here in this quaint little town. There's an amazing restaurant on almost every corner on or around the historic Leonardtown Square, or the square as we call it. I'll even show you some hidden treasures that are a little off the beaten path that are well worth the short drive. Come join me for a culinary tour of Leonardtown. The first stop on the tour is Old Town Pub. Hi, my name is John McDonald from the Old Town Pub in Leonardtown, Maryland. We are a pub and restaurant. We have a full menu featuring chicken wings, burgers, side items, flatbreads, pizzas. We have 14 beers on tap. We have a full bar. We have a full inside restaurant. We also have a private party room where people have birthdays, anniversaries, celebrations. We have a back poker room, which is used a lot for meetings and private gatherings. We have a outside patio, which is open in the summer months. We have umbrellas. We also use it in the winter. We put a tent over it for more seating. It seats about 40 people. We have live music. We have different kind of specials every night. Our biggest attraction is our wing night, which we have every Monday night. It is 50 cent wings, bone in or boneless. We have a food truck, the Old Town Pub Wing Wagon, which is extremely busy right now. Neighborhoods throughout the county have asked us to come. We go to firehouses, we go to rescue squads. It's been a very successful time for the wing wagon. This is the process for our wing night, which really starts a couple days before that. We pre-cook thousands of wings, and then we cool them back down. Once wing night starts, about an hour before, we just start cooking wings. Buckets at a time, take about five minutes to cook. Once they come out, we use any of our 13 different sauces. The most popular being the Old Bay, Black and Gold, the Hot, Garlic Parmesan. We sell about 7,000 wings. It's gotten to the point now where we're so busy that we're using both our kitchen and our food truck to fry the wings. We're just about at maximum capacity for the four hour period that we have it. We know everybody loves wing night. We appreciate everybody coming out. It's uh, really an exciting night. In our restaurant, even though it can be hectic, we appreciate all the support from the community. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Lucas. I'm general manager here at Old Town Pub. Uh, today we're going to be showing you some of the cocktails that we're doing here for the pub right now. Uh, we offer our Orange Crush, our Dirty Girl Scout, our Mango Margarita, and our White Sangria, which is a passion fruit right now. Uh, today we're going to be making the, uh, the Mango Margarita for you. So we're going to start off with some fresh squeezed lime juice and uh, go ahead and add that right here. We're gonna do our mango simple syrup, give it that nice, you know, fruity freshness to it. And this one has been a, uh, a fan favorite here lately. Uh, just one of the specialty drinks that we've been pumping out. Um, so we'll start with that. We're gonna do some fresh pineapple juice and then some fresh squeezed OJ. Just going to go ahead and add that in. And I forgot the most important part, the tequila. There we go. Wouldn't be much of a margarita without this. We're going to go ahead and add this in there. And this one's great just right over ice or you can add a little salted rim to it, a little lime. Um, but yeah, this one has definitely been a fan favorite for us. And we put it in our, our OTP uh, special mason jar right here. You just give that a great shake. Like I said, right at the house, right over the rocks, and it's good to go. 
So for this one at the house too, like I say, a little salt on the rim goes a long way to, to kind of boost up that margarita. But yeah, just a nice little shake. Pop the top on this guy, and then just right over ice. Add a straw, you're good to go. Uh, you can order any of our drinks here at Old Town Pub uh, by calling in. Also, we'll be launching something that's gonna be a part of the wing wagon to where you guys can pre-order these drinks. And if the wing wagon will be in your neighborhood and we're offering it that day, you guys can get these cocktails delivered to your neighborhood as well. If you'd like to order from the pub uh, for pickup and curbside delivery, our number is 301-475-8184. We have our full menu available. It is online at oldtownpub.com and we just want to thank everybody. The, the support has just been tremendous throughout this virus situation and we couldn't be happier with the way things have worked in a very trying situation and we appreciate everyone both coming to our wing wagon, coming here to the pub, ordering our mason jars. Everybody's been so supportive and we appreciate it immensely. Thank you. Our next stop brings us to the Rex restaurant and bar. Hi guys, my name's Kira and I'm a manager here at the Rex. I just kind of wanted to talk about how we are located in the downtown Leonardtown Square and we are right in front of where all of the music happens. We have some outside seating so that when you come here you can sit and watch all of the music, watch the traffic that goes by in Leonardtown and enjoy the beautiful weather and have some lovely cocktails. We have a party room that you can rent out. You can just give us a call or come inquire on it and we are happy to help you in any way possible. So our twins, Damien and Desmond, have prepared a lovely taco special for you guys. So we're gonna cut over to them and see how they've prepared everything for you. You can take this recipe and make it at home, or you can just enjoy and watch them and come visit us on Taco Tuesday and play some trivia and eat some good tacos. Hi, welcome to the Rex Kitchen. I'm Desmond. I'm Damien. We're the twins. And today is Tacos Tuesday for the Rex, where we normally have trivia, but due to coronavirus, we'll be showing you how to make some simple and easy chicken tacos. Pink with the guy is basically just a simple salsa with vinegar, onions, and some lime juice. For our seasoning for the chicken is salt, pepper, cumin, and chili powder. I'll be cutting the chicken, dressing that up, and getting that into the pan. For the pingo de guy, I'm gonna start off by dicing my tomatoes. Do about two tomatoes. Put them in this bowl. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna use half a red, half a yellow onion. I'm gonna dice that up. There's multiple ways you can dice an onion, but I choose a more simpler route by doing quick slices. And then from those slices, you're gonna treat them like tomatoes and just run your knife through them. Yellow. Next, we're gonna juice some limes. But first, I want a little bit of the zest to go in my pinko. I'm gonna give them a quick, quick wrench. As you can see, while I was making pinko de gallo, I had cut up my chicken, seasoned it with salt and pepper, cumin, the chili powder, due to the simple fact that I had cut raw chicken on my cutting board, I had to take it to the back, make sure it's clean. I washed my hands and now I'm gonna put on gloves and continue to cook the chicken. Now my lemon, now my lime powder wash. I'm gonna re-glove up. And I'm gonna zest them into my pico de gallo. I think I'm gonna do about one lime, one lime zest. Now I'm gonna squeeze all three of these, approximately. I got a strainer. Sometimes you like to roll it to get the juices rolling. Makes it easier to squeeze. The reason why I'm using a strainer is so I don't get no seeds into my pingo de gallo. 
Once that's done, I'm gonna take this to the back. While he's taking that to the back and the chicken's almost done, I'm gonna go ahead and take the tortillas and throw those on the grill so they can get nice and warm and toasted. Right here, I got some apple cider vinegar and some rice wine vinegar. I'm gonna do a little splash of apple. A little splash of rice. A little bit of sugar because all the tomatoes and the acidic that's come from the limes, you don't want it to be too strong. Uh, let's do two tablespoons, should do it. And then for a little bit of heat, I'm gonna use a little bit of sriracha. Two smoked teaspoons, a little bit of sriracha, and I'm gonna give it a stir. Just pour the tortillas off because they're nice and toasted, but you still want them to have them kind of soft, not too firm. So I just pulled that off, and I'm about to stir that some lettuce that go onto the bottom of the tacos. Get yourself a nice head of uh, iceberg lettuce here. You can either do two options with it, you can just cut off what you need, or for me, I like to break out the core, pull that out and then cut it. That way you don't have no hard cores inside your salad for your lettuce, a little pinch of pepper, a little pinch of salt, give it another stir. Teaspoon for a little taste. Mmm, that's good. So now that he got the pinko done, the chicken's done, the lettuce is shredded, now it's time to assemble. Start off with a little bit of lettuce. Then you want to add your chicken. Some people like cheese in their tacos. I prefer cheese in my taco, so I'm going to add a little bit of shredded cheese to it. Right on the chicken, so the heat will go ahead and melt it a little bit. Then you want to fold it together. For presentation look, I'm going to go ahead and stick it. So we're going to add some pinko. There you have it. beautiful and delicious chicken taco. Simple and easy, you can make at home. So the twins made up these chicken tacos. We always do a different taco, nothing is ever the same. So tune into our Facebook page and you can see what kind of tacos we're having for the evening. On Wednesdays, we have our Winging It Wednesdays and that always kicks off our music for the week. So Wednesdays, we usually have some light acoustic with our wings. Thursdays, we always have some light acoustic as well. Fridays, we like to kick it off into the weekend and celebrate it's Friday and we're off for the weekend, so come on in. We always have a band Friday and Saturday. And Sundays, we always do like a light jazz brunch. During this time for coronavirus, our hours are changing a little bit, so we're open at four o'clock. We close at 8 p.m., give us a call. We have our updated menu on Facebook, so you can check us out there. We are doing a curbside pickup, so just give us a call. It's 301-475-1512. We will bring your food out to you, and we will run your information for you to pay. You can pay over the phone, you can pay when you get here. We are offering to-go drinks to go as well, so you can get beer, you can get liquor, you can get a cocktail. Anything that you guys want, we've got it. We can bring it out to you. We would like to thank all of you for your support. When we open back up, please come see us. Next up on our tour is Sweet Bay Restaurant and Bar. Hi, welcome to Sweet Bay, Leonardtown, Maryland. My name is Peter Lupo. I'm one of the owners of Sweet Bay, and we have a kind of wonderful story 
and how this place originated in this little quaint town here in Leonardtown, Maryland. Some of the owners are very integrated into the government system and the Navy. One of the members sits on a board that I sit on in Washington, D.C. She asked me a question about two years ago about the restaurant business. It turned into a discussion and a friendship. And she told me she had a building down here in Leonardtown. And she said, how do I get a restaurant like you have up in Washington down into that space? I said, you don't. I said, it costs too much money to build a restaurant like this. You never get your money out. You never get a return. And a town like Leonardtown can't support a restaurant like you have in your mind. The lady's name is Susan Dyer. She said, I think you're wrong. She said, I think I can get somebody to get into your restaurant. A year later, she came back to me and she said, okay, you're right. <laughs> Can't get anybody to come build my space because the space, this, when we took over this restaurant that you see behind me and you'll see a tour of a little as we go through, um, costs about a million dollars to build when you have a building that's never been a restaurant. And in a little town like this, I just didn't believe you could get that out. And most restaurateurs agreed with me. Susan and her partnership crew disagreed. And they stuck with it and said, we don't want fast food. We want a nice upscale dining experience and we want to bring a touch of class to Leonard Town. So she convinced me, she got the money together. Together we got to build a wonderful, wonderful space and I was wrong. Leonard Town supported us. St. Mary's County in Southern Maryland supported us. And for the past three months, pre-March 15th, for the past three months before that, we were packed. The community loved us and we were able to produce food like St. Mary's County, I don't think has ever seen and hasn't seen and won't see yet again until we get reopened. The chef, Marcel, and some of our staff decided that it was the best thing to do for the community, for ourselves, so that we stayed working and the restaurant stayed relevant to reopen. We, we changed our menu, um, still trying to keep it very upscale, but also trying to make it more of a to-go menu. And some, like all of us in our new norm, we have been trying to create a, still a great experience for our guests and the community has continued to support us. I've been in the restaurant business for 20 years. I own three restaurants in Washington, D.C. Uh, from bar type restaurants, upscale, trendy spots. This experience both here in St. Mary's County and this warm people just welcoming and happy and happy to have us here. Uh, and then now into this new norm, which is COVID-19 have been a new experience for me. And the last uh, four or five months for me have been a, just a all around roller coaster. And uh, without the COVID side, it's been great. We're gonna take a moment, we're gonna show you a little of this restaurant, a couple of the different spots and spaces, what you can do here, especially once we get reopened. We have a bar atmosphere, we have a, a comfortable, warm space that's always gonna feel busy, always gonna feel alive. We have a private room in our wine cellar, and we've just started and finished the completion of our patio space that will be reopened as soon as the state allows us to do so. Here at Sweet Bay, we want to be able to offer lots of different experiences. Here we're showing you our wine cellar. This is built down in the basement, and it's one of the reasons I really thought this space was going to be so much fun. We created this space for family dinners, meetings. Behind you, you're always in this element of warmth. And we can sit up to 16 people down here. We don't have a minimum as of yet. And we really want people to have a different experience. We have wine tastings, whiskey, tequila tastings, um, all things that we're gonna be able to do and we're super excited to do going forward. The mayor of the town was the first person to have an uh, uh, event down here. I thought that was traditional and um, we're, we're super excited to use it moving forward. Sweet Bay came about from, the name of the restaurant came from a offshoot of the other restaurants. My other two sit-down kind of high-end restaurants in Washington are called Scarlet Oak, which is the state tree of Washington, D.C., and Magnolia, which is um, obviously everybody knows what the Magnolia tree is. Sweet Bay is the name of the Magnolia or the type of Magnolia tree here in Southern Maryland. And that's where it came from. We wanted to kind of stay on that same theme. Just as a small note, in my yard, I have a Scarlet Oak tree. I have a magnolia tree and it is a sweet bay magnolia.
So that is the name and how they all came about. I'm Chef Marcel uh, from Sweet Bay. Uh, this is my sous chef, uh, Juan. Uh, today, um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the uh, crab cake. Uh, crab cake is one of the uh, signature dishes for uh, Sweet Bay. Let's do it. <laughs> So first of all, I'm going to use a sauté pan. We're using the olive oil. I'm going to wait for the olive oil to warm up. And I'm going to get the second pan to do the baking hatch. Why I create the baking hatch? Um, I was looking to create something different something that I can go very well with crab cakes. And I came out with the hash. It's very simple to make. Uh, real corn, asparagus, tomato, and I create a barbalone sauce, which is a butter sauce. And everything blends very well together. Uh, everything's from the scratch. Everything that we do in uh, soup is from the scratch. Nothing is pre-made. Everything we make it here. And the key for my crab cakes we use uh, crackers instead of uh, crumbs. We use crackers and also we use uh, Dijon mustard. That's a wild taste, the Dijon mustard. All right, so now the oil is ready. We're gonna grab the cupcake. What are we gonna do? We're just gonna sear the cupcake to get a nice crust, and we're gonna finish it in the oven. Now we're going to do the hash, grilled corn bacon, asparagus, tomatoes, and bacon. Just a little salt. Now we're going to plate it. Two of the things that we really focus on are the drink program and the food program. People always tease me, why do we have paper menus at a classy restaurant? And I'll tell you why. So that we can change it every single week. Every week the chef comes to me and he asks me, you know, hey Peter, is this working? Is this not working? Did you like this? And we are constantly tweaking, changing. He's coming up with new ideas. There's always going to be a few things that are staples, but we are also constantly innovating and changing those things, not just on the food side, but also on the drink side. You see here our crab cakes, which is something that'll be a staple and stay on our menu all the time. We are an upscale American fair. What's American fair? It's everything. America makes everything come together, hopefully, and we like all cultures and we try to embrace every type of food the world has to offer, and then we make it our own. Um, and our chef is an expert at doing that. 
We've also brought some of my bartenders from Washington and they have brought some of the most amazing specialty cocktails. And that's a big part of our program from things we make with fig jam. We make things that explode in your mouth. We have flowers that are edible and you eat them and they leave a sensation and they match the different types of foods that you do. We also always have the latest whiskeys, tequilas, gins, and every other kind of trendy cocktail. When we reopen from COVID, we'll have a smoked bubble Manhattan. They'll pop the bubble at the table and the smoke will billow in your face. So we always want to be on the cutting edge and we always will be. Out here in front of Sweet Bay, we are standing uh, right where our new patio is going to be. We are so excited to open this new feature as soon as the COVID crisis ends and we get the permission to open up. It's going to be a very European style patio setting. We're excited about it. You're going to have full service, cocktails and events. And it's the perfect place to sit when the music takes place here in the square. We're really, really excited about this opportunity to be part of the community. We can't wait for all the events that take place and the life and activity that takes place here in the square during the summertime. So in our new norm here at Sweet Bay, you can order from Tuesday to Saturday night, four to eight. Um, take the order on the phone, place it for you, bag it, organize it. It's done with limited touch. We change our gloves and masks every order and then we'll find out what kind of car you have and we'll run it out to you. We'll take your credit card either on the phone or we'll grab it at you at the car and run it back and forth. Um, we are aware of the current situation and we wanna be as responsible to our community as humanly possible and also keeping our staff safe and the people around us. Here at Sweet Bay, we wanna thank you so much for your support and your continued support from the beginning of our opening and even at this hard time during the COVID crisis. The other businesses here in the community and us, it is crucial to have your continued support. We all thank you. We're all working together as a restaurant community and we really thank you for your support and your continued support. Thank you so much to take a glimpse inside of Sweet Bay, taking a look at our kitchen, our patio, our bar, our wine room. Thank you for your support and please, please continue to support us. Come see us soon. Final stop for this edition of the Leonardtown Culinary Tour is the Slice House. Hi, welcome to the Slice House in uh, Leonardtown, Maryland. We are just off the square in an old building that has been here for a long, long time in Leonardtown. Uh, years ago, this was occupied by uh, Kevin Thompson, who has Kevin's Corner Cafe, who's now in the Willows building. Uh, Kevin was here for about 10 years. Uh, the building sat vacant for a couple of years and uh, I purchased it about a year and a half ago. We spent uh, five months renovating the building. Uh, our business uh, is the Slice House. Uh, I'm Ken Held, my wife Megan is my partner as well as my 26 year old son John. The three of us uh, work at, at the business together. Our goal when we started the business was to bring an authentic style New York pizza uh, to Leonardtown and we believe that we've done that. And a lot of it has to do with the dough and how the dough is made. We do make all our own dough and we use some of the finest ingredients available. Our sauce comes from California, our cheese comes from Wisconsin from an Italian cheese maker uh, that's also involved in the dairy farms uh, that they uh, get their milk from. We've been open for about a year now, just a little over a year. We've done pizza by the slice for the whole time that we've been open until the whole coronavirus started. And when the dining room got shut down and we knew that there was just too much time spent in the restaurant doing the slices, we converted to just doing whole pies. Now we're hoping to get back to pizza by the slice here when all this is over, opening back up our dining room and our bar. But I also have great news is because people have always wanted whole pizzas and are enjoying the whole pizzas that we're doing during this time. I'm opening up a second location on the square it was in the old Big Larry's next to the post office. So that location will be ready to go here in a couple of weeks and we're gonna do whole pie carry out out of there as well as our delicious bagels. Our bagels are also baked in house. We make the dough uh, again 24 hours in advance, proof it ourselves, make our own, and then cook them in a 650 degree oven. We serve bagels from Thursday till Sunday from 6.30 until we sell out. And when I say until we sell out, it's not a few bagels, it's 500 bagels. The other day we actually sold out in 45 minutes. Um, they've been super well received uh, by the community as well. And uh, we really, really uh, love it down here. Uh, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. This piece of art here is done, uh, I was over at the SOF market uh, that our friend Jerry owns and I saw some metal work over there and uh, I called Nick 
Torch Boyd, Nick Boyd, he's a welder by trade. I never met him before, I said, hey, I need a piece of pizza for my business. I need a four by eight piece of pizza. He says, four inches by eight, eight inches? I said, no, Nick, four feet by eight feet. I basically gave him what I wanted and he brought that in a month later and it's been the iconic piece of our restaurant since we opened and uh, Nick's become a great friend. He's done a lot of metal work for me around the restaurant including the sign that has uh, what our slices of the day are and, and some of our uh, other work uh, that, that, that's in the restaurant. Uh, so I always tell my friends that I opened up a bar and disguised it as a pizza place. So all kidding aside, uh, my son, my 26 year old son who loves craft beers, he had carte blanche to do whatever he wanted at, at the bar. And uh, the result has just been amazing. We have eight beers on tap. Um, none of them are national beers. They're all craft beers. A lot of them from Maryland and Virginia and Delaware. So we try to always source craft beers. Also, we have an amazing selection of bottles and cans that are again, mostly craft beers. Uh, one of the very non-traditional beers that we have on tap is the Schaefer Light. That's for me because I actually love Schaefer Light and that's the only one that my son lets me have here. Judith Taylor has been with us as our bartender for about six, seven months now. And, and I gotta say, this is one of the best bartenders in Southern Maryland. She has an amazing following and knows what people like and uh, a lot of times their beer is in front of them before they order because she knows what they're gonna want. And what's new because my beers are constantly changing, I rarely ever have same beers on tap. It's been a lot of fun uh, and the pizza and the beer goes together well. So this is a Molly's Blood Orange Blonde Ale. It's actually, Molly's is based up in Prince Frederick. It's 45 minutes away. We have 32 ounce crowlers, so we can actually can our draft beer to go and this machine actually cans it for you. It's just a simple pressurized system. A lot of people actually don't know this. Like a lot of regulars sit at the bar and they'll ask me what this green machine is all the time but uh, you can get our draft to go. We have eight beers on tap that continuously change. And if you're unsure about it, you can actually download this app called Untapped and look up the Slice House and we continuously post the beers that we have all the time. It's changing con continuously. Like we change it a couple of times throughout the week. So everything is rotating, everything is changing. We're very good at keeping up with the beer trends and what people like, what people don't like. So, and obviously if you have any questions, feel free to call, come in and ask. We're more than happy to help. We do have a phone now. Our phone number is uh, published on the website, 301-997-6577. You can call in your pizza order as early as 10 o'clock for the time slot that you want. The only thing that I do say is that Fridays and Saturdays have been insane and we, it's not that we actually sell out of pizza, it's just the slots fill up quickly right up until seven o'clock. So people can call in as early as 10 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're guaranteed a pizza, Friday and Saturday, not so much. And again, they say, well, why don't you make more pizzas? I said, I'm making as many as I possibly can. And we're excited about the new location uh, opening up because not only will we have the slices here, we'll have double the capacity in the new location in a couple of weeks. Um, the bagels are also, again, Thursday through Sunday, 6.30 until we sell out. Those were not taking advance orders until we go to the new place. Uh, those are first come, first serve, and you see the beautiful bagel sitting on the counter and just pick which one you want. Uh, right now, this is Noah. Noah is one of my premier pizza makers uh, uh, and tossing our house-made dough. Um, one of the most important things for a really good uh, New York slice of pizza is the dough. My son, who should be here, he'll be here in a minute, um, is the uh, master behind the dough. Uh, we make it uh, a day before it proofs. Uh, in our cooler for uh, 24 hours. Uh, and we make about uh, 150 pizzas a day uh, in a thin crust New York style pizza. Uh, it's very, very important for it to be stretched. Uh, a little story is, is before we opened, I actually bought a fairly expensive dough press and thought that we were gonna use that. Uh, one of our early employees showed us actually how to hand toss the pizza. And we've been doing it that way ever since. I have about six or seven different pizza makers uh, uh, Noah's been with me uh, almost from the beginning, and uh, if you look, it's a very thin crust. Uh, he uh, doesn't use a lot of sauce. The tomatoes are from California, uh, fresh tomatoes from California. Our cheese, uh, we found a uh, beautiful Italian cheesery in Wisconsin that uh, we get our cheese from. They're actually a part of a, a bigger um, uh, consortium. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, they actually are with 
the people that supply the milk, uh, the farms, and, and the dairy and stuff. They only do Italian cheese. They've been around a long time. It's some of the finest ingredients you could buy. And right now, Noah is making a pepperoni pizza. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, it's fairly labor intensive. He's very good at it, and it's fairly quick. So uh, while he's put the, the, the pepperoni on the pizza, a, a little bit about uh, my family. Uh, so my wife and I have been together for a long time, about 35 years now. And our son, who's uh, 26 years old, um, he joined us uh, when we started this venture. I'm a native New Yorker. I was actually born in the Bronx and grew up in Massapequa. Well, I've been gone a long time, but, uh, but my roots are still there. My great great grandfather was actually uh, started his first bakery in the late 1800s uh, in the Bronx, and he actually went on to have a real distinguished career. He was also the president of the New York Bakers Association or the New York Bakers Club. Uh, my great aunt, my great uncle, and my grandmother also owned an ice cream parlor on Fordham Road in the Bronx, uh, sandwich shop, ice cream parlor, and stuff. And so there's a lot of fond memories as a kid going from the island back to New York and visiting grandma and grandpa, uh, or as we call them, Oma and Opa Hell. So uh, Noah hand tossed the pizza, topped the pizza, and now it's going in our oven. Um, the oven that we have here is a, it's called a Marsal oven. It's from uh, the Northeast, it's two inches uh, of brick on the bottom and brick lined on the top. We heat our pizzas at six, we cook our pizzas at 650 degrees. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, they, it only takes about three and a half minutes uh, for a pizza to cook in the oven. So I'm going to jump in there in a second. I'm going to give it a spin and then, and then take a look at it. And that pizza will literally be done here in probably about another 30 seconds. We're ready to take the pizza out of the 650 degree oven. And... Look at that beauty. That's a delicious cupping pepperoni. It's got some really nice flavor. And the support has just been incredible. I think people are really enjoying our pizza. We, we can't thank everybody enough for keeping us open, uh, keeping our business actually thriving uh, through all this nonsense. And, uh, and we love the fact that you also are supporting the other businesses. I talk about that a lot on my website, that if you don't want pizza, you need to go and support my other friends that are in town. And, and I know that everyone's been doing that. Everybody's trying real hard to keep everybody fed. And some people are doing some real uh, great things with groceries and some other things and all modifying their menus. We all just hope that everybody stays safe and that we get back to normal here soon. Well, that's it for our first stops on our culinary tour of Leonardtown. Join me next time as we sample more amazing cuisines both on and around the square.